What's going on, everybody? Happy Thanksgiving. We are here bringing you the, I guess, the full slate, which feels a little bit like a showdown slate. It's only three games on this Thanksgiving, but there is a lot of interesting options and obviously some huge tournaments to go through in the, in the DFS industry. I'm here, as usual, with my man Sheets, and we're going to be breaking down this slate. Uh, I think this is kind of an interesting, weird slate that you have to approach in a very uh, contrarian manner, which almost makes it feel like a showdown slate to me. What do you think, Sheets? I'm telling you, you know, I, I don't know whether DraftKings does it on purpose. I mean, everybody's watching football on Thanksgiving. And to me, I don't know whether they picked this slate on purpose, but it's just great. I mean, you, you could play a lot of different things and be kind of happy about it. And that also lends itself to people losing a lot of money because like, you also you play what you like and you're very comfortable with your lineup. And next thing you know, you know, your guys are doing well and you're just getting crushed. I mean, it's just like the beauty of DFS. And likewise, you, for those of you, especially they're on the, you know, the East Coast or whatever, you could, if you don't want to bother too much with this stuff during the, during the early part of your day, I mean, look at New Orleans, New Orleans Atlanta is not till 820 at night. I mean, there are builds where you could just fade both the first two games and play it like a showdown and, and literally not even watch football if you don't even want to. You, don't even, you know, if you're, the family doesn't even like watching football, you could just play everybody in the New Orleans Atlanta game, which is probably the best game. Or, you know, you could pick from the early game. There's so many ways you can go that will make you happy. But which ways are you going to go that will make you the most happy? And I think that's really going to be very difficult. Yeah, it is. It's, it's interesting because what jumps out, like, and we're going to go game by game, obviously. But starting with this first game, I feel like I'm getting really, really tired of attacking. The, I know Trubisky ended up putting up 20 fantasy points last week. Well, that was about 20 less than he should have had for any normal quarterback in that situation. Um, he is so bad, but I am still tempted to just run out these Chicago receivers with, with him and, and sort of like piece in other spots elsewhere. Like I actually think that's going to be a little bit, a little bit contrary. And I don't know about him specifically. I think he'll be on Trubisky, but I, I do think that going with the receivers in this early game or, or trying to target this early game a little bit might, you might get a little bit off of some of the chalk. I think people are going to want to play that New Orleans Atlanta game. We could hope that we had a similar have a similar situation to what happened in Atlanta. I don't think I mean what happened in New Orleans, which Atlanta dominated and was a low scoring game. Um, but I I mean obviously that's the one that draws your eyes to it. I'm just thinking from a contrarian perspective. We don't really have an idea for ownership. It's too early on Tuesday, but I don't know. I just feel like this first game is is sort of like one that jumps out as a potential shootout even though I don't like either of the quarterbacks I also really don't trust the Detroit defense they play fat they like we've been talking about you've noticed it all year they've been airing it out I just feel like there's a way this game could end up being like a little bit of a sneaky spot to target and I've done really well on Thanksgiving slates for some reason it's always been with Stafford obviously but guys like Marvin Jones who's my guy who I always play on Thanksgiving day slates because yes. he's always unknown and he's always goes off on Thanksgiving I don't understand what it is so well, we, we need we need Stefan Diggs too Where I know he? seriously that would make well, it too easy. Well, for me, I mean, for, I guess my first question is, again, I'm, I guess I'm ignorant for not – who's going to be the quarterback for Detroit? Is Driscoll playing? Well, as of right now, I think we have to assume that he's going to. Okay. Um, I don't know – if I mean, if he's not, it obviously makes it a little bit harder to target the Detroit team. But, it, it, I mean, the truth is they're hard to target with Driscoll. Like, so, so I'm not going to play Driscoll anyway, I don't think. Um, so I'm just basically so, – I'll, so the I'll way, the receivers so, anyway. So the way I'm looking at it, okay, and again, like I said, you can do this. So, like, again, if you were going to play the Trubisky side, right, I mean, again, this is just the, the moto thing, right? So you'd play – you want to play uh, uh, Allen Robinson. I think I you take Gabriel you have, out of there. I have a feeling Gabriel doesn't play. Oh, my God. So, so and you have to – okay, so, so I'm going to ask you about a guy in a minute. And then let's say that you want a double stack. I mean, you could do this. And then let's say that you want to bring it back with with I don't know with with Galladay or yeah let's go Marvin Jones for the hell of it. I mean you can then play like all of this stuff. You know what I mean? That you could you could even still play. Uh, did I put Zeke in yet? You could put Zeke in. Yep. You could put him in. You could play whoever you want. Yep. If you play this, you know, so so it's a night. Like I said, like if you have an opinion on a game. I mean, this is a slate is very conducive. I mean, they made Kamara only 8,100. I thought it was going to be more. Zeke at 74. I mean, so if you do want to play this for Chicago, it's totally cool. And, and like you said, with low ownership, and this could be one of those lineups, like you said, it's funny, during the pre-show, I didn't even see how 
easy it was going to be, but to leave money on the table. I mean, like, who, how could you even spend all this? Yeah. I mean, you could, let's just say you wanted to play Jared Cook. I mean, you'd, you'd leave, you'd leave you know, whatever. You'd leave a minimum 700 on the table, right? Yeah. And you probably so, not. So I'm, I'm, let's pretend Gabriel's out for a second and try and. Oh, I didn't mean point. Gabriel. I'm sorry. I meant oh, uh, Anthony. I meant Anthony Miller, actually. You got you got Miller. You just had all three of them. I think we put so oh. if, you, if you slide Jones up into the other rece, uh, receiver spot. Oh yeah, sorry about that. No, you're good. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually think that all the defenses, I could make a good argument for every single defense in this situation. So yeah. I don't care about defense. So let's see who else we. Can, you know what I would do? Maybe if we did this, is I would consider a, a double stack with. Uh, you could also play what's his name. Uh, I would consider a double stack with Galladay. Um, you think you think you're going to be able to get there though? I mean, I don't. I, I don't. I think that I think you can consider it. I actually really like Galladay. I just think the price is too low, and I okay. think he's an excellent. I think he's a, t- a world level receiver. But the problem is, you can say the same thing about Amari Cooper on this slate in the other game, but he's got a terrible matchup. Um, so Here, here's a I question like, I have. For you. I like Gage a ton this week, but I don't even know. Like maybe you lead even more on and, and play even a different defense. Like I, I don't think you need to spend all your money i think there's other places that right. you know there's other guys we've talked about by the way javon weems in that game or Wimes, however. that's Tom the guy i was going to ask you about who the hell is that guy he's going to be the guy who will take taylor gabriel's spot but i think really it goes more to miller um i'm just going to bet on miller it's weird that the projections i mean i'm looking at a couple different projection systems right now yeah and these they've got them projected roughly the same and obviously weems is being being cheaper I know. I hope that stays that way because I have more faith in Anthony Miller. Um, I also have more faith in Allen Robinson than anyone because of all this stuff. And I honest, honestly think if you wanted to get really creative and playing this game, and you maybe didn't, maybe you didn't play Miller, let's say, and you played Robinson, and and you can use the tight end. You know what I mean? J.P. Hiltz, like it's, it doesn't feel good. I'm sorry, uh, or Bronecker. Like these are gross plays, but it's a terrible tight end spot. And if you can get low ownership on a slate like this. I once, you know, this is how I won. Uh, I won all the big tournaments in a playoff year one time because I just double stacked the cheap tight ends, but one of them was, which was a backup, and I did it in the one case and everything. And you got two touchdowns from each of them, and even though they only put up like 15 fantasy points, it was enough to differentiate yourself and win all the money. This could be one of those types of, of funny weeks. Yeah, something like that is kind of interesting to me. Um, uh, I also think that Ridley is going to be lower owned than he. I think Ridley is a, is a really is going to be a low, the low owned option from Atlanta. I think everybody else is going to have super ownership. Um, yeah, I like that. I think it's interesting. I'd hate this playing Trubisky again. He's not my number one. Um, I have two builds so far on DraftKings. He's in one of my two, but it is hard for me um, to trust him. Really, I guess is the way to put it. But I still, no matter what, I don't think I'll have any lineups that don't include at least one bear and the other one who we didn't include in this conversation. I don't think I'm going to be playing a ton of Montgomery, although it makes some sense. I think I'm going to lean a little bit more to Tariq Cohen um, and just error with the passing side of this game and just hope that it goes that way. And I, I also don't mind Scarborough on the other side, but I think that he's going to lose enough touches to where it's a little bit risky. Um, anyway, that's just sort of my thoughts. What do you think? Well, tell me about that because when I, my original lineup before I cleared the deck here was, 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 uh, was trying to Scarborough with Detroit defense, right? If you didn't, if you didn't think that it was going to, if you think Trubisky sucked, you know, whatever. Yeah, and I do. So I think I mean, that's a viable route. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and Bo Scarborough, I mean, he's, um, what was he like? One, one carry away from a hundred yard bonus last week. And you know, he's, I, I think that his, uh, that was very a frustrating week for me. I had a lot of Scarborough because really? he, he could have had a big game. Yeah. He's, but he's, I think again, he's here rookie or second or whatever he's got. So he's one of those guys, as far as I'm concerned, that kind of has touch upside rather than downside. You know, I think they'd be more inclined to get him more touches than less. I, I don't know. Depends on how the game flow goes. I guess that sure. McKissick would be in more passing down situations, um, you'd think. But along with some Ty Johnson, but I, I don't know. It's, it, it does make some sense to me. I think the projections might be a little bit off on this one as well. So I, I can definitely get behind some Scarborough and the, the Lions defense against Trubisky. I like both defenses in this game separately, which is weird to say about games that you're talking about shooting out. We only have three to choose from. But I think both defenses have upsides against these quarterbacks, and that's what you want in the defense. So if you're not playing this game, or even if you are, don't mind t- taking a defense with it, by the way. That's one thing people never do on small slates, and it makes a lot of sense. 
defenses like if you took, if you just play Tampa Bay for example and just play the defense against them every week you're going to get some picks and some sacks and potentially a pick six you know which seems to happen every other game for them that's how you want to play a game and it doesn't matter if you give up 40 points you know Bob we could look at builds but but you know the funny thing is I'm trying to think about this along the way is you know it's looking to me that every and we'll we'll go through this but every build that does not every lineup that does not have the Saints and Falcons receivers stacked in some way mm -hmm. is going to be able and is going to have Kamara and Elliott. You know what I mean? Like, yes. like, like those guys are going to be, I mean, just through the roof owned just because of the way everything, because no one's going to want to leave 4,000 on the table. pretty much. And um, I just wonder if there's a way to, to, even if you want to go kind of cuckoo with this lineup mm -hmm. to, to get rid of one of these guys, replace him with even like a Scarbo, and then and then use the flex and take one of the you know the good receivers from the Atlanta game, so you don't have Kamara and Elliott in the same lineup. You know what I mean? I don't know, just a way to be different. I don't know. Yeah, what I'm about to say, I think makes more sense on Fanduel personally. Okay. Um, but I think that Latavius, I'm sorry, I think yeah, I think Latavius Murray's definitely an interesting contrarian option. What's weird is that I played him on the full slate on Fanduel last week because he was basically near the minimum. Felt great when he got that early touchdown. Thought he was going to be off to the races and only ended up with seven carries. Um, if they're beating the hell out of him, which is definitely a possibility, and they could definitely beat him up on the ground, I could see him taking over a little bit of a, a big role in this game. Also, he touched down equity, so I think he's an interesting way to go. Um, I'm just taking a look because this is a, a, a situation that's strange. I just think all of the sites are really behind some of the information that I've actually gotten into. Like, we don't even have people in our player pool um on some of these sites that i think are going to play like like to have like um uh, Devontae freeman he's in the player pool he's in the player pool on DraftKings. he's not on the, some of these sites with projections oh he's, he's gonna play though i mean i i, I from, from I'm, all, well, he's gonna well he's gonna be updated then because from everything from everything we could tell and, and by the way that that's to me the route that maybe you want to go if you want to get different something like him maybe you play him instead of a kamara um and and then run it back with the uh, with the Saints defense and leave a little on the table or something like that. And then instead of Julio, you play Michael Thomas or something. You know what I mean? Something along those lines, um, where you're going to differentiate just enough, I think, because you still stack in the other game. Um, and I don't think you're going to get a ton of ownership. I really do like the Latavius Murray touchdown upside play on FanDuel. I think more than DraftKings, but I think either one of those running backs could be your differentiator. I don't know where the ownership's going to be on on uh, Freeman. I'm getting I'm guessing he's going to have some, uh, but it's going to be hard for me when people look at this slate to imagine just not playing Kamara and Zeke just because it's so easy to. Yeah. I mean, what do you think Zeke is going to be on? Ninety percent? Like in the three thirty three, I bet you he's owned eighty plus percent. He's he's just I don't I don't I'm not really good at that. I just know that he's going to be owned. Uh, the the analytical term is a shitload. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know about 80 or 90, but it's just, like you said, it's so easy. And it's not like you have to make a decision between him and another guy from his game. I mean, like, like if you were going to play Kamara, you know, there, there are builds where you might not want to play Kamara with Thomas, right? But, but just, well, maybe there are, then again, you can stack that with those two also, you know what I yeah. mean? So I think both those guys are going to be pretty, pretty chalky. I mean, the only thing I guess that might prevent Kamara is he did give people a little bit of a heart attack in the first half um, yes, last week um, when he was really super high owned and he did nothing mm -hmm. um, and then finally got it going in the second half. So maybe he won't be – he's got to be. I think both these guys have to be through the roof. They just have to yeah. be. Yeah. It's going to be really hard for them not to be. I, I think your pivot, you know, the guys we mentioned, and then we didn't mention this guy just to throw out because we sort of talking about a position even though we were trying to go game by game, but it's kind of hard not to on a three-game slate talk about everything at once. Yeah. Um, you've got Devin Singletary, who I think gets overlooked in this spot. I, I think that's going to be your, your tournament low own play. Um, I'm just guessing the way it works out is that more people will play either Montgomery or Cohen if they're going to go down, but so, so, so you've got Singletary and basically you're just playing the ownership game, but I don't think it's a terrible way to go to pivot or hope that maybe Zeke and Kamara split enough carries and he has a big game. He can outscore both of them 
I'm sorry, Zeke and, uh, sorry, Kamara and uh, Latavius Murray split, splits the split enough carries where he can outscore both of them. Um, it's possible. It's not maybe the most likely, but it's definitely something that you want to be looking at doing in tournament lineups. And it's the wide receiver. There, it, there's a lot of guys to choose from. So maybe that is where you want to differentiate. I just think the running back situation is interesting because you're going to have such insane ownership on two guys that basically playing anybody else, even another one with them in the flex, other than maybe Freeman, I think is going to be off the board. Well, I mean, I just, I just threw this in there just, just for, just for, 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 for crap's sake. Um, th what it would look like if you faded both Kamara and um, what's his face and Zeke. Yeah. The only problem is that's what, then that's what everyone else will do. <laughs> you, th you think so? I think then if they're not, if they're not going to commit to it, they'll go that way. They'll just play the Julio Thomas thing. I don't think right. they'll necessarily play Ridley as well, but I think you could maybe pivot over there into a lot of other low owned receivers, like uh, maybe a Michael Gallup or something. Yeah. Um, that's sort of where I would look. Cause I think that he's going to be a low owned guy. Um, I'd still be looking to try and differentiate other places. Cause you're, well, you are differentiating by not having those guys. You are asking an awful lot from Scarborough and Singletary. Um, and Scarborough is a guy who I'm not personally quite as high on. So well, maybe I would go Singletary Coleman. Yeah. And then I would play a different receiver instead of Ridley. I'm sorry, Singletary Freeman. I always get, I always get Kevin Coleman and Freeman mixed up from the, from the old days. Um, but you're and, I, and I really like Russell Gage. Yeah, but you're 100% right. I mean, the thing we said before in the show is, is that, that it, it, in so many different builds, you could spend as little or as much as you want. Exactly. It's everything is viable. It's just, I know that's not the greatest analysis to give. I just think it's an important one. That's why I'm saying you treat this game like it's a showdown slate and you, you, a, you get different at, at any way you can, because all these plays are not so, what, what's funny is that there's going to be condensed ownership, but the projections outside the top three guys, Thomas uh, and the two, or Thomas, Julio, and the two, uh, uh, running backs, they're all going to be similar. Projects, should project, the players are all going to be similar. So if you find out John Brown is going to be half owned, what Kenny Galladay is, maybe you want to go that route. I don't mind that. If you want to, if you find out that Kenny Galladay is going to be well lower owned than Amari Cooper, go that route. That's where I'm looking. I'm literally just going to try and take a contrarian stance any way I can. Treat it almost like you know a showdown slate. Be willing to leave money on the table, and then you know find my individual favorite plays. I really like Gage. I don't mind playing him and leaving 2,100 extra. Let's say I had left 2,100 on the table. Nobody's going to play Gage and just leave 2,100 on the table. You know what I mean? They're going to play Ridley then. You know what you, you, know what you could you know what you could do maybe if, if you want to differentiate? Uh, you know, a lot, I just showed that, you know, all these like double stack options are so easily obtainable. Maybe what you could, you could do is, is just do like single receivers from, from one game. Like if you play Ryan with just, I don't know, just Ridley and hope he gets two touchdowns or something like that. Sure. Sure. Or something like that. Um, one, one thing I'm flirting with the idea of doing personally, just thought I'm going to throw it out there. I'm considering Allen Robinson a hundred percent, just taking him in a hundred percent of my lineups and just not worrying about anything else. Um, I don't think, I think he'll end up being the third most popular receiver by the time of the day, maybe fourth. Um, he gets the highest target share of anyone except for Michael Thomas in football uh, of anyone on the slate anyway. And he is going to get the ball thrown to him quite a bit. He had 10 targets last week. Um, I think you're going to be looking at a game with, you know, somewhere in the teens target wise, or at least like double digit with upside. I really think you're going to see a big game from him, especially if Gabriel is unable to play. Um, I think you're going to see locking in, especially, I mean, we don't even have Trey Burton who he used to go to a tight end. He's going to lock into his guy, which is Robinson. So I really feel like Robinson is my favorite play on the slate receiver wise. I mean, again, this is early, but this is Tuesday and I don't mind playing him and leaving, you know, 600 on the table where I could have had Julio instead or, or leaving even, even leaving up to 2,400 on the table and not, and playing him instead of Thomas and hoping that game goes a different route or, or you don't need to leave all that on the table. I'm just giving examples of there are, that's a way you're going to differentiate and give yourself at least a chance. And I think that it is extremely likely that Allen Robinson is the number one or two receiver on the slate. I think he'll be number one point per dollar. Um, of the big spend ups anyway, so I might just lock him in. Well, let me let me um, let, let's let's do the um, the Detroit game um, for a second. Let's let's go back. Let's do that one. Uh, not Detroit. The, uh, the 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 Dallas game. Um, so 
I have a little bit of narrative for this, um, for what it's worth. So first okay. of all, so first of all, you know, again, these are just kind of the obvious types of things. You know, with Josh Allen with John Brown, bring, you know, bringing it back with Cooper if you want to do receivers, or you know, may as well you can put Prescott in the same in the same mm -hmm. vein, whatever. I, I'm pretty sure that. I don't know if he got one at the very, very end of the game or not, but I know with like one possession left to go, Amari Cooper had not did not have a reception for the first time, like like ever pretty much. Yeah. Um, the Patriots kind of, you know, because that's what they do, right? right? And I would not be surprised if, if they had a chance to really make sure that didn't happen again this week uh, with Cooper. Um, yeah. So, you know, Josh, whether whichever way you do it, whether you do Josh Allen with John Brown and Cooper or or Prescott with I, I think they're very similar. What's interesting is that Prescott is gonna be, I think, the most I think like if you're playing cash on this slate, like he or Breeze are your cash game quarterbacks. Probably Dak actually, like if you I mean maybe you don't want the savings, but even look at totals and then the game flow, like in this him at this price, it just doesn't make sense. Like, um, so, but at the same time, I don't think anyone's going to know who to possibly pair him with. You know what I mean? Like, do you really want to play against the, these, these corners, especially like taking Cooper? Like, that's why I'm a little bit more on the Gallup side of it, but it doesn't feel good. I mean, that's what's so weird about that, this situation with Dak for me is that you really want someone to pair him with and there's not really anyone. So he might be higher, like own, well, he is, of course, he's going to be a high owned in cash games, I think, but it's weird because you don't, you don't have like a receiver you really want to pair him with. Um, just looking at the quarterback position anyway. The Buffalo, the Buff, that's why the Buffalo Dallas game, I, I probably would lean the Josh Allen route because I think he's going to be the lower owned of the two. Sure. But Zach, the, I mean, the I, guy, Zach, I expect to have a better game. <laughs> yeah, the other guy in Dallas, again, I, I, I don't know, just as a safe guy, I don't know if that's safe, but I, I wouldn't mind playing, playing Witten in some lineups. Um, just nice, you know, he, he likes to look for him. And if Buffalo's defense is doing, you know, is doing well, uh, I think it's kind of a natural – Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had a couple of drops, yes, last week, but I have no problem with it. Yeah, I think Witten is the, the the natural guy at tight end. I actually think that's who people would put, put in uh, with Dak. I think that you would get a lot of people with Jared Cook also. So basically any other tight end other than – oh, and Jaden Graham. People are going to play Jaden Graham a little bit. Um, I don't think any other tight end is going to have that crazy ownership, but you're going to get guys like Hawkinson coming off the injury. Um, either of the Chicago tight ends, well, it's not pretty, like – 10 points could win at tight end this week. So if you – maybe maybe that in that lineup where you use those guys, you do use all the pay up for everybody else. But you can – I mean, you can play those guys and they could end up being the highest scoring tight end just because the nature of the slate and the tight end position being kind of gross. And what if New Orleans is up a bunch and doesn't really need to throw the ball much? Like, also, Breeze has not looked good in general. Like, that's a funny thing for him to be the chalky guy. I'm just sort of trying to find ways to escape that – you know, certain parts of that at game. Um, so I think that trying to find a tight end somewhere other than Witten and Cook and Jaden Graham is just going to be contrarian by nature, and I don't think I, anyone's going to play them. I don't know. I, I have this feeling that, again, I mean, every lineup you make is easy to make. So, so if that's the case, I mean, maybe, maybe nothing is that chalky. You know what I mean? Because everybody can just kind of uh, – I get except for the Atlanta game, I suppose. But, but uh, if, if you play – I don't, I don't need it's, – it's, again, I go back to my original thoughts on the slate. I mean, when you, when you build, build your lineups going into this, this day, you're, you're going to be so happy and so comfortable because you're not looking at the other people's lineups, right? right. And, and it's a great slate for people to play. You know, it's just it's going to be hard to, to, to win without, without figuring out how different you want to be. You know what I mean? Like, do you want to be different by leaving money on the table or by making worse plays? You know what I mean? It's um, – I don't may say worse plays in the wrong way, but, but more off the board type plays. Yeah. Well, like taking what, going back to the original theory of my, like my strategy on this slate. And I hate that I'm using Trubisky. Maybe I won't, maybe I will skip over to play just for Ryan or who I expect to probably throw for the most yards. If I just had to guess yardage wise. Um, but I also love the, the New Orleans defense in general. So it feels really weird to pick him. So everybody feels kind of blah for me at quarterback. So then I might just go back to, to the quarterback here. But I think what I really – the reason why I'm naturally gravitating that way also is, I like I said, Allen Robinson probably like near lock for me. You've got the underpriced Anthony Miller if you do want to save. But on the other side, I think my, I may just put Jones or Galladay in every single lineup, one of the two. Um, they, they, these guys are not the uh, – I like to think of them as the poor man's Evans and Godwin. But – 
they have those monster games, you know, about about 75% of their games, one of those guys has a game we'd be really happy with here, I think. And then if the other guys let us down in that price range, these are going to be the lower owned versions. So the any any extra access I can ex get exposure to in this game too, and you throw, you know, uh, Anthony Miller in there, let's say for argument's sake, it's gonna, then it's going to lead me to a very chalky build for anyone else who has that, but people aren't mostly going to have that. The problem is once you get into running back, everybody's going to play the same plays then, and then they're going to play Thomas in the, in the flex. Um, but so maybe you just play one guy on each side, Robinson or Jones or Galladay, and then you pick whichever one of the guys you want from the other games. Um, that's sort of a route that I'm considering. Yeah. I, I, hate, I hate to be like this, but I mean, it all, it all makes sense. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like it's going to be hard to debate these, these, these builds and one versus the other because they all have certain merit. I will, I will say that um, I happen to have been watching the Chicago game last week against the Giants. Mm -hmm. And I will, I will tell you that Mitch Trubisky was maybe one series away from being benched in that game. I thought he was going to be. He was one series away. And, and if they didn't get that march down the field and get that last field goal, I guess it was before the end of the first half. Yep. I mean, he was done. He was awful. I mean, I was watching with, with, a, with a buddy of mine. When they got down to the – you know, he got unlucky. He got one big play called back, right? But, but he was – got down to the eight-yard line, and I said, this is just perfect. It's third and goal. Please just run the ball because if he throws into zone coverage, it's going to be an interception. And that's exactly what happened, right? Mm -hmm. the guy's a train wreck. Um, so, if it were a showdown slate, I'd probably pay, take some Chase Daniel. But, but um, <laughs> it's, it's a but, – but, I will tell you this, man. If you if you take Trubisky at twelve thirty, with all with all that other stuff coming on, I, he's got to be he's got to be the lowest known quarterback on the slate, right? He has to be. No, it's whoever's playing for Detroit. Probably Driscoll, I would guess, would be the lowest. Oh owned. yeah, maybe. And I think that actually Josh Allen might be lower owned than Trubisky, if I had to guess. I don't think people are going to try to play Josh Allen here, and I actually think that that might be an interesting place to target. You know what's really crazy is that. It's, we've talked about it all year long, like with this guy, but John Brown no, doesn't get played at all. Like considering it's crazy. where it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And he's had, he's had incredibly bad luck in terms of touchdown. It's finally regressing back to the means those last two weeks. He's got three in the last two weeks, but he's, I mean, there has been no receiver more consistent all about all of his games, but one with five catches, at least 50 yards. Um, and that was last week. Uh, I mean, he basically is getting between eight and eight and fourteen targets on your on your typical weeks. Uh, you can imagine this is like a must-win game, so he probably gets looked at a little bit more here. Even um, if he ends up being the low-owned guy in the group, you know, I certainly don't mind going that way. Like, no one's—I don't think anyone has the core receivers of just the Dallas. I'm sorry, just the Detroit, Chicago, and then john brown and then no other receivers and i think those guys could end up paying off now is it most optimal not even close but it is absolutely worth taking a shot on as is you know isaiah mckenzie as a pivot off of the the whoever ends up being chalky whether it ends up being miller on the other side in chicago or uh or the the kid um Ooh, isaiah mckenzie it's a long shot play like these are just the long shot he's a pivot off of either of I'm, I'm honestly searching the board to see what team he plays for he plays for Buffalo. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's how low owned he's going to be. Um, but he's got upside for this. Like, we, you know, like at the end of the last year, in some games they had, he, I think he had like a multi touchdown game. I think he had like a 100 yard game. Um, some huge plays, I remember. I can't remember exactly what they were, but I just think he's worth taking a shot on if the other guys, if the Bears guys, for any reason, are being chalky. I think we'll get a better feel for this slate with ownership. And all I can say is the players grayed out so much, you can do whatever you want. That's why I'm saying do what you want, but do what you want, factor in the ownership, and definitely take at least two to three low-owned guys in, in your lineups because you, are, you cannot win with the chalk on these three-game slates, and I have a feeling yeah. it's going to be pretty condensed. Yeah, I, I agree with that. But I, I also think that, um, yeah, that, that again, the ways to differentiate are going to be the low-owned guys or the, the leave money on the table, which I consider the low-owned combination. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, or double tight end, tight end at the flex spot. That's another way that I'm not thrilled about in this tight end slate, but you play, you know, maybe you play Graham and um, in the tight end spot. At the other end, you play uh, Jared Cook and just hope for the best. The tight ends do all the scoring. In, in just, just, for, just, for, just, for the, just for the hell of it, okay? Let's presume this were a one-game slate. 
and we were gonna so it was it was New Orleans against Atlanta. So the game's at Atlanta. Uh, we'll take the well, who who's, who projects for the better values here? Let me just see. It's actually it's really close. I think you're. I think that Breeze is gonna be the chalk. Um, you, know, you know, come forget that Kamara and Thomas are are, are probably project for better value. So let's start yeah. with the curve. Okay. So let's just say we were going to do this. Let's just say we're going to play Julio and then we're going to play. Let's, let's just start with this. And then let's say we were going to play Camara on the other side. And so this would be like kind of a chalky Atlanta stack, right? Okay, so what this does is this fades this fades Michael Thomas at least, right? Yeah. So if you faded Michael Thomas, it's, there's certainly some wisdom in fading uh most fading the most popular receiver on the slate. Yeah. The only thing is just his target share is so absurd that it's hard to, for me to find to find that fade being as optimal. Like I'm debating even like I I don't know if I'd want to play Ridley and and Julio in the same lineup. Okay. I would just rather go to Russell Gage and then jump up to Thomas and then maybe skip uh, skip Zeke potentially, I guess. But but you don't have to even. I mean, like you could still do it. No, you could do it if you double tight end it. Um, but you or you could jump down from Julio to to Ridley. Although I'm a little bit higher on Julio than I am on Ridley. Um, so you've got well, the Robinson even, in there. Yeah, if you did Robinson in here, you paid down. But I don't want to go Graham with him. So let's 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 be safe. Let's put in put in uh, Witten, right? I actually don't mind Graham. I, I don't think they're they're all that. Uh, yeah, I don't mind either one. All three of them? No, oh, no, no. Yeah, I think you can do that. But I just, I in general, I'm not going to love Atlanta's offense on this slate. But this is a good build for the way that they could go. Uh, I actually think this might even be like a little bit too chalky. How about that? That's a little different. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people play Amendola, and and you know, there's some there's some merit to that, I guess. I don't think I would do it myself, but well, I don't know against the Bears. I mean, maybe maybe you want to play someone where you have to get rid of the ball a little bit. I think if I'm playing an Atlanta stack, I'm playing Michael Thomas. If I think Atlanta can put up that many points, I don't see how Michael Thomas is not going to get there. All right, so put in Michael Thomas. What's the big deal? Yeah, then maybe you maybe this is where you fade Zeke. Or you could fade Kamara. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to play this way. You play Robinson, yeah, it's a little tricky. What if you played fade, what if you fade both of them? Do the game stack without, without that's a, like a beautiful contrarian play. If you did what? You skip both of them. Which and then you get what? to play the, mid, the mid-tier running backs that we start, talked about before. You mean both running backs? Yeah, just skip, skip Zeke and skip Kamara. Just get off the board with it, and well, then, then you, boom. Then, you could, then, then you, I think we're exactly where we were, right? Yeah, I don't know if I would play. I don't think Scarborough or Scarborough would be the guy for me, but I would play the other guys. I would play either Singletary, Cohen, uh, Singletary. You could play Singletary with Cohen, I think. Um, potentially, uh, you can't quite get the Singletary and Montgomery. Oh, you can't. But yeah, you could play. You know, you could play Cohen and. Uh, and the, only problem, the only problem with this lineup, which is looks like really good, is that it, it leaves zero on the table. <laughs> I don't mind the leaving zero on the table in this kind of a spot because you've got a really unusual build there. I mean, the Scarborough thing is not going to be a popular choice. You don't think so? I don't. Okay. I don't see. Maybe I'm missing some. I mean, unless I hear about his workload, I know he had all the carries. I just don't know that it's going to happen that way again. I really don't. That was a weird football game. Really weird. I mean, and he got 18 carries and 98 when they uh, – okay, even if you take the 30-yarder out of it. And some weather. I'm just saying, like, no targets. He's not I – I, I, I'm leaning other ways myself instead of Scarborough. I like the other Well, so better. you pick somebody else. You take uh, – you like, you like Tariq Cohen better, right? So I, – I, Yeah, I would go Cohen, and I, w- I don't even mind using Freeman in the same line. Like it, that's my thing. If I'm going to play the Atlanta stack – Freeman, right. Yeah, I, I don't mind, like, just hammering the Atlanta guys. How are they – I mean, are the Saints' defense bad now? I mean – No, they're excellent. That's the problem. Oh, I don't know if I want to take all these guys. This is why I'm not stacking the Atlanta. Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah. I'm stack. I'll stack – I'll take tons of exposure to Atlanta, but I'm not going to have their stacks. I mean, I'll stack New Orleans. 
who do you oh say so let's say you're gonna you're gonna that go to that route you're gonna say that new orleans is gonna handle them right um you know the guy that, that you've mentioned a couple of times that i haven't put in any of the builds yet is um is uh is latavius murray right yeah so what kind of i i get i presume that's something like Latavius Murray plus Saints defense. Yeah, you definitely take Breeze out of it. Is 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 an idea, right? Mm -hmm. So if you did that, do whatever you say, do whatever else you want, right? <laughs> because you are off the board. Well, because then, well, what would you do though? You know what I mean? Like, so if that were the case, I, I would I would make sure to get in. I would get in uh, Zeke right away. I would get in uh, Thomas. I would get in Robinson. Is, is, and is Thomas and is Thomas and so so your script is a little Thomas bit obvious. Okay, so, so let's skip Thomas. Let's skip Thomas for now. Robinson. Well, we got to go with Lock Robinson. Robinson, maybe Julio. I guess at that price, I think Julio would probably make the most sense because we'd have to, you know, have yeah. to get some receptions. Yeah, um, you're playing. I, I now, actually. Now this we can go. We so can this is the area. The, here's the weird part on this slate. This is the route where you play. You play the. Uh, you actually could play the Matt. Not in this lineup, obviously. But the, the only way I'm playing Matt Ryan is if they're coming back and he ends up throwing for 400 yards and three touchdowns, where the running game doesn't for New Orleans. That's the only game script. This game script. You know, I, yeah, this makes some sense. Um, you got my JD McKissick in, at no ownership, or the double tight end. Um, I like I like a lot of that. I, the, I, will, the, I my the, only this, thing this is have, this lineup is gonna is going to. It's hard. I mean, it's it's there's no of, one in the world with this lineup. I was gonna say it's kind of cavalier to say considering how many lineups are gonna be, but I would say that that probably nobody has this. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think this is the lowest owned lineup you're gonna find. <laughs> I mean, what's interesting is like as as much as the Cowboys. <laughs> we believe that they're decent and everything and that they're going to win this game. They're the favorites. The, w the thing I'm going to say about Buffalo is like, we don't really have to think that they're bad. We saw Dallas get smoked and handled through the air by a Jets team by the Jets. So why can we say that Buffalo couldn't do the same thing? Well, and the other thing, if you want, if you felt like leaving money on the table, you could do this. You could, you could just go Prescott, Prescott instead. Prescott sure. is cheaper than Josh Allen. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, he's gonna be the chalk. That's what I was saying. Yeah, um, but I believe Buffalo. I believe in Buffalo's D also. So, I mean, most look. I'm, it's gonna be. It's that's what's so hard to take Trubisky in some ways. Even is that Prescott's is four hundred more. Um, so I'm hoping that it would make the ownership low on 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 Trubisky. But you gotta imagine. I mean, you gotta imagine Prescott's gonna put up at least decent numbers in this game. Whereas Trubisky could literally be pulled. <laughs> I, I, would, I would also like to, uh, like to say that Buffalo, I mean, as far as their defense goes, has had a real, real cupcake schedule. I who, mean, who, who, look, they, I mean, say what you will about Cleveland, but they've shown offensive firepower. That's like, the one. Yeah, that's the one. That's, that's the one. That's the one. But, who, but who, who's, who's put points on them? Like, they had I Philadelphia who can score some, and they had a bad game at Philly. Okay, they had one bad game. They play, I mean, they – you know, they shut down uh, the Patriots, which, like, I know that doesn't look like the same thing as we thought it was at the time, but still something. It's not like anybody's really put up anything on them. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Um, Their corners are legit. But I like this. I think it's an interesting build. I think that this – I think that the one thing I would say is that I think that you get that one that exposure to one of the – like, I like the Chicago-Detroit, you know, getting somebody from either side of the passing game in that game. That's what I would say, especially Robinson. And then I, I think I'm going to personally go the route of – of mostly playing either Jones or Galladay. Um, I like that early part, spot. I think people are going to save things for later. I don't mind fading some of the other other spots and, and playing a Trubisky in, in a weird small slate like this. Yeah, and I kind of like your uh, the, Allen, the Allen Robinson thing. Yeah, Allen Robinson is really the one who stands out to me as my favorite play on the slate, and I think that his ownership will be lower than it should be. Now, did you say there was going to be weather at, at any point? No, no, no. I said that there was weather in the different uh, game. I mean, this is no, just – None of these like games – yeah, None, none of these games could happen. All right dome all domes dallas dome pretty much i mean this is it's a dome i mean it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be, be fun, fun man. man it's gonna be a fun thanksgiving i got a good feeling that i'm gonna end up somehow pulling one through 
Um, anyway, well, you're gonna, you're, you know what? You're going to have a lot of money to spend because you're going to win the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 14 game. That's Wednesday right. I always game. dominate. We got to do that one in the tomorrow. Yeah. I, I always dominate the, uh, the Thanksgiving basketballs the day before Thanksgiving basketball massive slate that they threw out there for some reason, even when I had only one entry, I, I, yeah, I did it. I wanted That's one. amazing. Um, anyway, so we'll see about that one. We'll get back to you guys with that coming up, uh, just in a little bit, but, uh, Anyway, uh, Sheets, any thoughts before we get out of here? I thought we talked about a lot of different plays. I know that we mentioned a bunch, but that's because we want to talk through everything. I think you know sort of where I'm leaning. Um, hopefully we know, you know, we gave the people a good idea of where they could sort of look to potentially build, and it's do what you want, but factor in ownership is basically how Yeah, what I, what I would say really is, is, is wait till, I mean, remember, because it's a short week, so it's short for the content providers too, right? Mm -hmm. So I would wait until before you get tied down to anything, I would wait until the last minute, you know, that you, you have before you have to start getting ready for your Thanksgiving and really just pay attention to, to ownership projections from wherever you get them, you know, and because those things change also. And they only have like a couple of days to pile, compile those things. So I, I would really just, just don't get tied down to anything. Cause as you've seen, you could build pretty much whatever you want. So, so I would really to wait as long as you could to check ownership and um, don't be afraid to, to leave money on the table. Those would be my two, my two bits of advice. Wise word from the man. Um, I, I love it. I think it all makes sense. I think that we're on a good path. Guys, any other thoughts about this? Please leave comments. Give us the likes. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, send us some comments. And if you don't, things you don't like, things you want to change, we're, uh, we're here for the people. And uh, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Enjoy this slate. And we'll talk to you. And we'll see you at the top of the leaderboards. Happy Thanksgiving.